equation of, of agriculture in Jamaica. It's bad news. And basically what it says, I have two axes here. This axis, at the top of this axis, are things for which it matters that they are made in Jamaica. And it will matter that they're made in Jamaica either because there's some kind of trade preference, some kind of protection for them. So in the case of export agriculture, like sugar and bananas over many years, it mattered that it came from Jamaica, even if the consumer didn't care. And of course, within Jamaica, things like proteins um, are protected. And the other axis, which is the x-axis, is the axis that applies to whether or not economies of scale fundamentally transform the industry. Now, the further out you go on that axis, the less important economies of scale are. So what I've done is I've said to myself, where is the sweet spot in Jamaican agriculture, if anywhere? And where is the spot that you don't necessarily want to hang your hat on? So the sweet spot in Jamaican agriculture is in the upper green quadrant. And that quadrant is a quadrant where economies of scale are not particularly important, but the fact that it comes from Jamaica is essential. The red quadrant <coughs> is the quadrant where you must have economies of scale in order to succeed. And nobody really cares where it comes from, like corn or soybean. If you're in the red quadrant for 100 years or more, for the lifetime of everybody in this room, Jamaica has been structurally uncompetitive in agriculture. It, it has not worked for us. And we can spend a lot of time talking about why that is so, but it probably is going to take a big box of Kleenex and more time than we have today <laughs> to get through it. So let's ask ourselves, what's in the green quadrant, and what can we do to expand that green quadrant, and why I think that that green, that green quadrant presents some reason for optimism in agriculture and for entrepreneurship in general. Can I have one more slide, please, sir? So just to illustrate, looking at our business at Jamaica Producers, this would be the classic red quadrant business, which would be commodity export banana agriculture. One could argue that in the era of protectionism, it would have been somewhere up here because it would have had to have come from Jamaica in order to gain certain rights in, in the UK. From where I sit, this is a very natural upper left-hand quadrant, if you will, the, the Blue Mountain Coffee business. That must come from Jamaica. And the business of harvesting specialty coffee and sun-drying specialty coffee is a business that doesn't naturally lend itself to large amounts of capital or economies of scale. So the question then for those who want to invest in agriculture and technology is whether or not this space up here is growing or whether or not it's in decline. And I'm, telling, I'm suggesting that there's reason for growth, but you're entrepreneurs, so you will choose your own view. And I think the reason it's growing is threefold. Basically, from where you sit as entrepreneur, you have to ask yourself about your ability to finance your idea in agriculture, technology, your ability to produce your idea, and your ability to sell your idea. I'm going to take each of those in turn and tell you why there might be a fresh wind blowing agriculture. So let's start with the first question of your ability to finance your idea. If you look at the average lending rate disclosed by the Bank of Jamaica over the last 20 years, going back to, in 1995, the average lending rate, excuse me, going back, in 2005, the average lending rate, which was 10 years ago, was 24. 4.85 percent. In 1995, the average lending rate was 52 percent. 
And today, the average lending rate is 14.99%. Now, I just want to make sure, this is, this is my father's view of the most important thing that you need to know, and, I, and he told me that I, I share it with you, which is a basic understanding as an entrepreneur of compound interest. Okay, now, here is the thing. If you have a million dollars to invest as an entrepreneur right now, and you invest it at a rate of 10%, a year from now, you have how much money? $1.1 million. Now, if you don't take the $1.1 million out, but you leave it invested for 30 years at 10%, how much money do you have? Especially if you don't have. <laughs> you have $17.5 million. at 10%. But here's the interesting fact. If instead of it compounding at 10%, it compounded at 20%. So remember you had 17 and a half, 30 years, kind of the lifetime of a career in business, your own business. At 20%, Raman Peter from NCB, you had 17 and a half at 10%, how much at 20%? Does it double? Who thinks it doubles? Triples? If it compounds at 20%, you have $240 million. And if it compounds at 30%, at the end of the 30 years, you have $2.6 billion. Okay? Now, back to Shakespeare. In Hamlet, they said, neither a borrower nor a lender be. Now, it depends on whether you understand compound interest. If you borrow, at 30%, but you only make 10% in your agricultural product, it means that you only made $17.5 million, but you owe the bank $2.6 billion. So that was a bad move. On the other hand, if you borrow at 10% from the bank, but you make 30% compounded, then you've just made $2.6 billion, and you only owe the bank 17 and a half. The relevance of that discourse is that for the first time in a very long time in Jamaica, you can actually borrow money at anywhere near what you could reasonably hope to make as a return on the investment in agriculture. So there's a basis for the first conversation, ability to finance. 